Hello and welcome to Buffoon of the Week. We're a show that goes through last week's news and current events in search of people who said or did something so comically idiotic that they earn a shot to be named the most foolish newsmaker. Well, at least for this week. And you are in charge of picking the winner, which you can do by leaving a comment right below this video, by voting in our polls on social media, or by casting your choice on our brand new website. We made buffoonoftheweek.com so you can find out about buffoons we couldn't feature in this video, as well as to create some interactive content for you to enjoy, like polls, quizzes, lists, and a whole lot more if you register. So after you check out this video, head on over to buffoonoftheweek.com. Last week, you chose Oprah Winfrey as Buffoon of the Week for hosting a show claiming that white people are just inherently racist. And right now, Oprah, for being our lucky winner, look under your seat. That's right, nothing's there, but you get a free buffoon hat just for you. Man, I always wanted to do that. By the way, we release weekly videos on Mondays at 10 a.m. Eastern Time, and sometimes we'll even release a bonus video here or there. So if you like what you're seeing and hearing so far, go ahead and smash that thumbs up button and please subscribe to the show. Oh, and when you do, turn on that notification bell so you never miss another show. We're growing an awesome community of buffoonery enthusiasts that we like to call foonies and would love for you to be a part of it. So have some fun with us and help us grow the show at the same time. And remember, it's just a small click of a button for you guys, but to us, hitting that subscription button means a whole lot more. Before revealing our weekly nominees, we acknowledge some other buffoons who tried their best to be nominated, but their best just wasn't quite good enough. So as a small consolation prize, we include them as one of our dishonorable mentions. To start with, there was a lot of notable CNN buffoonery this week. As you might have read on buffoonoftheweek.com, CNN White House correspondent Jeremy Diamond threw away whatever shred of credibility he had in claiming that President Trump was considering Gettysburg as a possible site for his RNC acceptance speech because of President Trump's affinity for the Confederacy? He's talking about the hallowed Civil War battlefield in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, but that could be controversial too, particularly because this is a president who has consistently positioned himself as a defender of Confederate symbols and monuments to Confederate generals. Pam? Yeah, that's a fair point to make. That same day, Diamond even doubled down on his buffoonery. Uh, given the fact that the president over the last couple of months, as we have seen these protests uh, over Black Lives Matter and racism in the United States, uh, the president has taken to defending Confederate generals. So he would... CNN reporters really are living in denial. Ain't that right, Jim Acosta? Uh, and the president also uh, was slamming uh, President Obama, uh, Vice President Biden, accusing them of spying on the Trump campaign. That is just not true. That did not happen, has not been proven. This was illegal surveillance because there was not probable cause or proper predication, correct? Right. Illegal surveillance and changing evidence to conduct illegal surveillance is the very definition of fraud on the court. It describes conduct that's utterly unacceptable. You, sir, are fake news. As are you, Brian Stelter. Listen to this exchange lamenting media bias against Joe Biden. And yes, they're all being totally serious. I just am arguing that it's getting worse. It's getting more severe. Uh, Aaron, your view of this, you know, when you see um, entire media companies essentially exist to tear down Joe Biden, is there an equivalent to that on the left tearing down Trump? Uh, th there really isn't. What the heck is in the water over at CNN? Hey Humpty, looking for a 24-7 Trump bashing media outlet? You're on it. You can read more about this story over at, you guessed it, buffoonoftheweek.com. Speaking of delusion, here's this week's DeBozo Watch. Check out this clip where DeBozo brushes off Patrick Mock, a New York City baker with a business in Chinatown who is desperate for some city leadership during this coronavirus crisis. Right, we've been taking a hit since January. We lost our Chinese New Year, our busiest day of, of our community. The most festive holiday that we have. And then COVID happened. And now we're all part of it. What we need is more community. I know Margaret Chen doesn't pull it, but... Mock would later call the Bozo's blow-off a, quote, photo-op mission, 
and we'd agree, given DeBozo's love for the spotlight and hatred for doing any actual work. We go a bit further in depth on this story at BuffoonOfTheWeek.com. But ultimately, we went with MSNBC's Mika Brzezinski and actress turned activist Jamie Lee Curtis as this week's nominees based on some really off the wall behavior. Like what you see so far? Go ahead and smash that thumbs up button. Also, leave us a comment and tell us what you're thinking. And don't forget to subscribe so you never miss another show. This week's first nominee is MSNBC talking head Mika Brzezinski. Last week, Mika finally lost it, going off on a show-long tirade on President Donald Trump for a great number of reasons. There's clear disdain that I have for this president, but look at the facts. Look at how he's worn us down from his paid off porn star to Russia lies to racism in Charlottesville, racism across the board, children in cages. I mean, lie after lie after lie, conspiracy theories. Our country right now is really at a breaking point. If we don't find a way to hold this president accountable with his attempts to undermine the post office and also his apparent negligence, perhaps purposeful, on saving the American people's lives in this pandemic. You are pathetic at this point with his calamitous coronavirus leadership. It's killing Americans every day. He could be keeping people alive. He's choosing not to. Every day, this president looks more ridiculous. The clothes fall off. I mean, Mitch McConnell, wake up. Wake up and smell the coffee. Don't you see what's happening? You want to hold on to the set? You're going to have nothing at the rate you're going, at the rate you're letting him go. Can't you see what is happening? I know you have a lot of special interests in your state and maybe money coming in from Russia and interests. Your wife works in the administration, but wake up. It's not about losing the Senate. We're losing much more than the Senate. You can be sure that you will never see me on Fifth Avenue, ever. Ever, because he has said he could shoot someone on Fifth Avenue, I believe him. You know there's more we can include, but hey, we want it to be that long of a show. Well, you can see the full clip from Grabian on our website, thefoodoftheweek.com. You know, there was a time before politics when Mika Brzezinski acted like Donald Trump's biggest fan and cheerleader. It's been memory hold in recent years, but luckily we dove into the internet archive to pull up some gems. Donald, do you have a TV? Are you watching us right now? Uh, yes, I am. Okay, I always so... watch you, only because of you. <laughs> okay, wow. so, wow. Um, Sleep last night? Well, I, yeah, uh, well, I got woken up. But I, I, what? Um, what? By what? Well, what? you what know, happened? just, well, I, I, Donald wanted me to see the CPAC speech. I was skeptical, but I pulled it up on the internet. Yeah. It was pretty good. Pretty good. It was and, pretty good. And Mark Alpern, I woke up The this audience morning. loved yeah. him. Well, he's on the phone right Joining now. us on the phone right now, Donald Trump. Good morning, Donald. Mika, what do you mean pretty good? You know you loved it. <laughs> wow. As you know, I like you very much, and I also know you to be a very kind man, and I would not roll your my eyes at the concept of you running for president. What I would roll Mika, my eyes really at Mika, do you really believe I'm you kind? saying... Yes, I do. Wow. Yes, I do. That's You've been... shocking. <laughs> I know you are, actually. You've done okay. some very kind okay. things okay. for Let's people that I know. Question. Get to the question. All right, all right, Donald Trump, and by the way, you can say it, anything you want to say and be all big man, but you are very kind. All right, make it. Amazing. Back in 2011, Trump was part of the NBC family with his highly rated show, The Apprentice. So maybe Mika was being fake. But to remark that Trump was a caring person who had helped her friends, that seems to indicate a deeper personal connection. But is that even true? I mean, listen to the half-truths in this week's tirade. Whatever Mika's issues, and there are many, we are left to ask her what should we believe? Her opinion of Trump when they were on the same team? Or her opinion now that they are bitter adversaries? The answer we keep coming up with is that we should believe neither, because in both cases, Mika Brzezinski is acting for what's best for her and for her employer. 
which makes her a self-interested buffoon who will say and do anything that benefits her. And lately, what benefits Mika is to go after a seeming former friend who got into politics on the wrong side of her employer. Hey, don't forget that Buffoon of the Week is all over social media. So when you're online, make sure you like us on Facebook, you follow us on the Twitters, and go on over to Instagram and like us there too. But the most important thing you have to do is remember to subscribe right here on YouTube. This week's second nominee is actress and celebrity activist Jamie Lee Curtis. Last week, Curtis an ardent supporter of Joe Biden, floated a conspiracy theory concerning the 2020 election when she posted a tweet that said, God, why is it always Twitter? Don't you people have anything better to do? As I was saying, when Curtis tweeted out this photo of a postal truck on a flatbed tow truck saying, I swear, in broad daylight, the driver of the red truck had a red cap on with white letters. Conspiracy? Outright attempt at stealing the election by denying the access of the U.S. Postal Service? Let's not let it happen. At Joe Biden. Curtis's tweet came against a political backdrop in which President Trump has threatened legal action against several states who are considering vote-by-mail legislation as a result of the coronavirus pandemic. The argument being that blanket mail-in voting is more likely to cause delays, confusion, and even voter fraud, as we've seen in primaries in states like New York, New Jersey, and California. As you can imagine, the response across the internet to Curtis's tweet was none too kind. Jamie Lee Curtis's tweet is an egregious example of leaping before looking. Simply observing a truck on a flatbed and someone wearing a hat does not automatically equate to election fraud. The ridiculous lack of facts leads us to believe this conclusion about Jamie Lee Curtis. Either she is that much of a mark for Joe Biden that she sees things through the myopic view of politics and abandons all reason as a result, or she knew exactly what she was doing and is poking a political hornet's nest. Frankly, we tend to believe the former, not the latter. But whether this buffoonish tunnel vision is intentional or accidental, it is buffoonery nonetheless, and here's something we should all already know. Sometimes, folks, a red cap is just a red cap. So there you go, folks. Another week goes by, and we have two more kooky buffoons for you to choose from. But who's going to earn your vote? The time for choosing is now. Tell us who you got for this week's Buffoon of the Week. Hey, so thanks again for watching the entire video. Go check out buffoonoftheweek.com. Do you think we plugged it enough for you? And please subscribe to the show. So you can come back next week where we'll have two more nominees, but only one can be Buffoon of the Week. <laughs>